6.2, efficiency and exponential models. Basically, the majority of this lesson is about money, about interest, okay, about compound interest. So you probably back in, I want to say middle school, started talking about simple interest, okay, interest that is just compound, or is just done one time, okay. So if you have money in a savings account or whatever the case is, just interest that is figured once. What we're going to talk about is compound interest. Okay. By definition, an exponential model that is used to calculate the value of an investment when interest is compounded. For, in for instance, when interest is paid monthly, the interest earned after the first month becomes part of the new principal for the second month and so on. Interest is earned on interest already earned. So the more often interest is compounded, the more money you get out of it if we're talking investment. Okay. So we have a basic formula that we're looking at here. A equals P times 1 plus R over N raised to the NT. Take out the extra Ns, and it's really the formula we used from yesterday. Okay, it's that exponential formula. Um, P out front is the principal. Notice it says the initial principal invested. So that's your initial amount. So just like yesterday, that, month, that number out front is your initial value. That's what your principal is. What's that initial value you're starting with? Okay. R is still your interest rate as a decimal. Always, always, always as a decimal when you put it into an equation of any sort. N is a new part today. And N is your number of compounding periods per year. How many times throughout the course of one year is interest compounded? And that will depend on, do they tell us monthly, quarterly, annually, semi-annually, daily, whatever the case might be, weekly. Okay. And then A, the value of the account after T years. It might also see it written as A of T, which is what we saw in one of our, ex the exponential growth in the K last year. Okay. A lot of this is plug and chug. Be honest. Okay. How to use a calculator. Some of it is going to be manipulating and solving, but more than anything, at this stage in the game, plug the values in. Okay? So, let's look at some. Tamara invests $5,000 in an account that pays 4% annual interest. How much will be in the account after three years if the interest is compounded annually, semi-annually, quarterly, or monthly? Now, realize, how many questions is this asking? There's technically four questions here, aren't there? Okay, because we're going to find out how much money is going to be in the account if it's compounded annually, semi-annually, quarterly, and monthly. Okay, so we're going to start talking about annually. Okay. Now, let's start by going back through and identifying numbers in this problem. What numbers can you identify? Where do they go in the equation? What do you got? It's 5000 Okay. Inve Tamara invests $5,000. That's your initial value. That is going to be your principal. So that is my P. Okay. What else do we have? Okay, 4% interest is going to be our R value, yes. Am I going to put 4 into the equation? No, what am I going to put into the equation? 0 0.04. It's 4 divided by 100, or move the decimal two places left. So that R is going to be my 0 0.04 for that reason. What else do we know? Okay, three years. Three years is my, it's your T. It's a total time. Okay, so we're talking a three-month period. Now, we have four questions. Annually, semi-annually, quarterly, or monthly. Just talk about annually right now. Okay, if we're talking about how much there will be annually. The one variable we haven't figured out yet is n. If you recall, n is the number of compounding periods per year. 
if interest is compounded annually, how often is it compounded throughout the year? Annually is something that happens once a year. So in this particular one, n is going to be 1. Okay. So let's set up our formula and plug everything in. Again, I'm using this formula right up above, yes. So A equals P. And for P, we said 5,000. 1 plus R over N. So in this case, it's 0 0.04 divided by N, which in this case is 1 raised to the NT. So that's going to be 1 times 3, yes? Now, annually is 1. In all honesty, does that 1 even have to be there? No, okay? When N is 1, it's the one time. You can essentially just drop that out, okay? Now, you can go ahead and plug this all into the calculator as is, depending on how well you know how to use your calculator. There's also a little bit of cleanup that I can do to make it a little bit easier to plug in. In that, look inside those parentheses. What is 0 .04 divided by 1? 0 .04. What do you get when you add 1 to that? 1.04. So this is 1.04 in the parentheses. My exponent, 1 times 3, is 3. That makes it pretty easy. Most calculators, you can just plug that in as is, unless you have a calculator that won't let you put multiple steps in at once. Okay? So I, at that point, would go ahead and plug it in. If you have to do step by step, then you would have to do your exponent first. Because of PIMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, you'd have to do the exponent before you do the multiplying, right? Okay. Take a moment, plug it in. Make sure you can get your calculator to cooperate with you. And again, if you can't get your calculator to cooperate with you, please ask. So I'm just going to say 5,000 times 1.04, exponent button being the arrow, raised to the third. Does your answer match my answer? Yeah. Try it. If you haven't tried it, try it, as I said. Got to make sure we know what we're doing, right? Now, how are we expressing answers today? Okay, this is money, isn't it? So we want to talk, when we talk money, it's automatically assumed, dollars and cents. So we want two decimal places, which means I want this whole answer, don't I? So 5620 dollars and... 32 cents. Okay. No one's complaining. Did you figure out your calculator? As I said, you've got to ask if not. I'm not out there. I can't read your mind. Okay. Semi annually. What changes on semi-annually? Okay, if something is done semi-annually, it's done twice a year. Okay, and the vocab here is important, yes? Okay, you've got to know what semi-annually mean. Okay, so the only thing that changes is we change our ends to two. Now, when ends no longer one, okay, it's a little trickier, but not bad. So A equals... Still 5,000, 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 2 raised to the 2 times 3. So basically my n's became 2's instead of 1's. Everything else is the same. Okay. I generally take, try to take that cleanup step. 
As I said, if you can figure out how to enter it all in your calculator and get it to work out without taking a cleanup step, that's fine. It's doable. Just got to know how. If I take my cleanup step in my parentheses, 0 0.04 divided by 2, 0 0.02. Add 1 to that and you're at 1.02. Raised to the 2 times 3 is 6. And work the calculator magic. I don't know if you want to be fancy or if you're being lazy, but remember, you can't just arrow up to what you previously had and change numbers in it if you want. Does your answer match my answer? Okay. What kind of answer do I want expressed on paper? Two decimal places. So $5,631 and... 81 cents. May sound silly, but practice rounding today, yes? I may cut you slack if you're a penny off. You know Sophos won't. Okay, moving along. Quarterly. Something happens quarterly. How many times? Four times a year, right? There's four quarters in a dollar. Okay. Four quarters. Four quarters in a school year, but four quarters in a year, right? So, N equals four. So change your two N's to fours and redo the math again. 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.04. This time I'm dividing by 4. And I'm raising to the power 4 times 3. <coughs> 5,000. Okay, let's see. 0 0.04 divided by 4. 0 0.01, add 1, 1.01, 1 .01 raised to the 12. Five thousand, that's 1.01, 1 .01 raised to the 12. If you're not doing anything, it's because you already finished this whole row, right? I don't go as fast as so if we could, but okay. Does your screen? Does your answer match my answer on screen? Okay. What are you telling me that answer is? Okay, five thousand six hundred thirty-four dollars and thirteen cents. One two five rounds up to be thirteen. And. Last we have is monthly. What do you know about monthly? There are 12 months in a year, so something happens monthly. It happens 12 times over the course of a year. So 5,000, 1 plus 0 0.04. This time we're dividing by 12. That changes things up. Raised to... 12 times 3. Okay. Now, your cleanup looks a little bit different here, doesn't it? 0 0.04 divided by 12. Okay. 0 0.003333. Okay. Now, in that case, 
Okay? There it is on my calculator screen. What am I going to get when I add 1 to that? 1.00. Now, can you round that to, say, 1.00? Not 1.00. 1 .00. You need some threes in there. Okay? So, um, it's 1.0033. I'm going to put so on so forth like that. It's going to be raised to the 36th power. Now, as you go to type this in, here's what I'm going to say. If you round that inside value too short, it will affect your final answer. Okay? So you're going to have to kind of play around with it. But if you round it too short, it can affect, or it can affect your final answer. I guess I don't know if this one will, but I would guess it would. What? If you just do 1.00, it's just going to be 5,000. Right. Okay. So, with this in mind, okay, I have, so here's an option. Okay, I'm trying to give you calculator options. I have on my screen that 1.0033333 because I didn't know what 0 0.04 divided by 12 was, right? So, one option, if you want to use that precise number, I said we do exponents first, right? So one option is, while this is on my screen, if you want to use this precise number, I can go exponent to the, what am I doing? 36th. 36. I can hit equals. So that's what my parentheses raise that exponent is. And then I can say times 5,000. Now, that gives me a precise answer. Here's what matters. Does your answer round to be the same as my answer? Do we round to the same thing, no matter how you did? Well, I did the same way. If you did the same way, then no issues there, right? So, what should we be putting as our answer? Okay, five thousand six hundred thirty-six. Mine rounds to since it's three five nine, rounds to thirty-six cents. Okay. Now, I honestly don't know. If I would have just done 5,000 times, say, 1.0033 raised to the 36, does that get me there? No. It does not get me there at all, does it? Close enough. Not really. I don't know. It's more than a few pennies off. I expect it just to be a few pennies off, to be honest. Okay, it's more than a few pennies off. So the more threes you put there, the better. So another option... 5,000 times 1.00333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333
that's what people said like a true teenager. People are like, I want to live, you know, I'll give money to my kids whenever I die. Uh uh, they ain't going to have no money if I die. I'm going to spend this whole thing. Okay. What do we know here? Give me some information. 3,000 is my P. What else do we know? Okay. 3% is my R value. What do you actually put in for R? 0 0.03. Okay. Compounded monthly. Then we're back to N is 12. First bullet point, what is the value after the account? What is the value of the account after 10 years? What is that? T is 10. Okay, do you have all the information filled in? Most certainly should. So, 3,000 is my P, 1 plus R over N. 0 0.03 divided by 12, raised to the NT, 12 times 10. I'm going to do one step of cleanup, 3,000, 0 0.03 divided by 12, Point zero zero two five. Add one is one point zero zero two five. Raised to the hundred twentieth power. Okay, try it. And I will say today is the day to experiment with how to use your calculator, right? If you're thinking, oh hey, can I do it this way? Well. You're getting the right answer up on the screen, so you have something to compare against, don't you? Check your answer when you're ready. Does it match my answer? What is this answer? Okay, 4000 $48 and how many cents? Six cents. Zero six zero zero tells a six to stay. Okay. Now, this one's an interesting one. Okay. Patrick's already complained about the 100 years, but it's going to be interesting to look at the change in the total amount. I don't know if anyone's ahead of me, but there's... A pretty good difference. So what's the only thing that changes here? T is 100, yes? Other than that, it's the same setup. So it's still the 3,000, 1 plus 0 0.03 raised to the 12, or divided by 12, and then it's 12 <laughs> times... 100. Okay. So, with that in mind, I'm going to clean it up. Let's write that. Three thousand. Still 1.0025. Now it's raised to the 1,200. So add a zero, right? Have you uh, tried this on the calculator? Yeah. Just adding a zero to what I last typed up there. Okay. What's the answer look like? Sixty thousand, not six thousand, sixty thousand, thirty-one dollars and forty-five cents when you round that. 
that's a little different, isn't it? Okay. Even though Patrick doesn't want to support his future kids and grand grandkids, some of you may. They're just going to have my assets. Not if you spend it all or not and leave them with me. That's awesome. Like I'm gonna be taking my kids for ice cream. My truck. Wow. I can't wait to have this when he dies. That's interesting if I have grandkids. I'm not getting the bucket at like fifty five. You could. You can also have grandkids by fifty five. I can have technically have a kid right now. Okay. Not the smartest move, but you could. Not financially, no. Okay. You know how to use the formula, yes? Okay. Anytime you have a problem that talks about compounding interest and it uses some descriptor like annually, semi-annually, monthly, quarterly, um, you could throw in daily, you could throw in weekly, you know, you just have to know those amounts. Okay. Know how to use that formula. Bottom of this page, we have another formula. And that is talking about continuously compounded interest. So the difference here is the idea of continuously compounded interest is it's not a set time interval. It's just continually compounded, okay? So we're talking about the smallest time intervals possible. Now, this uses a formula with the natural base E to calculate and add back accumulated interest at the smallest possible intervals. So right here, our formula is A equals P times E to the RT. Even more importantly, why you need to have a calculator by your side today. Because we've got to figure out how to use this whole E thing. Okay? Once you know how, it's easy. But, again, come test time, if you're asking me on the test, how do I do this on the calculator, I'm going to know you didn't really prepare. Okay? You've got to know how to do it. So, okay, we've got some... Same new variables, some new variables. So P is that initial principle still. That initial amount, it's still out front. E is the natural base. It's, we talked about E yet in this class? I don't think. No, different E. That's usually, that's a, denoted as a capital E, and that's on your count there with scientific notation. Yeah, little e is called a natural number. It's a number like pi. It's a number like pi in that it is irrational. It's a number that goes on forever, doesn't repeat, doesn't end. Okay? Nope. Pi is not the only one of those. We also have E. So E is called the natural number. Um, e is also a button on your calculator. Okay? Any scientific calculator is going to have any button. You just have to find it and know how to use it. R is still the annual interest rate written as a decimal. And A is still the value of the account after however many years. So, Regina invests $12,600 in an account that earns 3.2% annual interest. Here's our key. Compounded continuously. What is the value of the account after 12 years? That's important because right there, when you see that word, those words compounded continuously, that tells me use a different formula. Right there, that tells me that I'm going to be using A equals PE to the RT. PERT, if you want a memory technique there, okay? Now, what do we know? Give me the pieces here. Give me some values. 12,600 is? That is my P. That's the initial amount of money invested. What else do we know? 3.2% annual interest means what? Zero point what? Zero three two? Sorry, I was struggling with what I was hearing. I couldn't tell if the extra zero was in there or not. Two left, yes. So 0 0.032. Compounded continually, continuously tells me I'm using that formula. There's not a number to put in. It tells me I'm using a different formula. What is the value of the account after 12 years? What is that? 
Oh, that is my T. So we are filling in the formula. A equals PE to the RT. So let's see. You told me P was 12,600 <clears throat> times E is just going to stay E. RT. So R is 0 0.032 times T, which is 12. So those are numbers that I am multiplying. Now, if done correctly, you could type this in on the calculator as is. But that's a big if because you have to get your exponent done correctly. Okay? My recommendation would be that you clean up the exponent. So 12,600e to the, what is 0 0.032 times 12? Okay, 0 0.384. Okay, important time to try your calculator again, yes? Twelve thousand six hundred times e. Now, you're looking for a little e on your calculator. Mine is right there above the ln button, and it says e to the x. I'm trying to think. Is there another e? No, that's my graphing calculator that has two of them. So right there above ln. Do you guys know if it's above that? I need to use my second function. Yes. So I'm going to do second, and then e. The way my calculator does it, it automatically sets you up to put an exponent then. If you don't need an exponent, just put a 1. I need an exponent of 0.384. Okay? Moment of truth. Does your answer match my answer? Does your answer match my answer? I don't care if my answer matches your answer. I care if your answer matches my answer. So you're like Logan and trash What? <laughs> Make sure you're not saying you match the moment. I, that's what you said. I'm not saying that. <laughs> okay, guys. What answer do we want to express here? What do we got? 18, okay. $18,498 and 63 cents. Okay. That compounding continuously really does the job. It really does there. All right. So that okay. Such good kids. Just, let's have this. Here's what I'm going to say. Two more questions. <laughs> Flip over to the back side. Yes. Listen. B has two bullet points. Try those on your own. We'll check answers on Monday. Okay? So we'll pick up on Monday. Um, we'll check those answers on Monday. We will finish the back side of the notes. And then you should have some work time for 6-2 on Monday. Remember, 6-1 is still due today, though. So right now, you're working on those two. And I have an answer key if you, you know, want to check or check with a friend. 